Well, today's interview is with the preseason Sunbelt Women's Player of the Year. She's the human highlight reel for women's basketball. So with all that said, I am so honored to bring on the one and only Dominique Davis. And Dominique, how you doing? I'm good. I'm excited. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. Oh, shoot. You, you. I was like, I got Dominique on. I mean, I, my show my show's about to kickstart today. So, but last year you were first team all Sun Belt, and you were a finalist for the Gillum Trophy for the best women's basketball player in the state of Mississippi. How does that make you feel getting recognized like that? Well, uh, it feels great. You know, it's a respect thing. And I, I mean, I can enjoy the fact that all my hard work is putting me in positions like this. Um, but, you know, I wanted that award. I didn't go up there thinking that I didn't have a chance to get there. So when I didn't get it, I was pretty upset. So, you know, I'm just ready for the season to show that I, I was that player, you know, so. Yeah, don't get me started, Dominique. And a lot of Southern Miss fans thought you should have got that award. Don't get me started. So, but I feel you right there. You're the best player in the state of Mississippi, my eyes. But uh, this season, pick third in the Sun Belt. So got some good recognition, but, you know, you guys got a really good team this year. What's some expectations and some things to look out for? You know, um, you know, those preseason and polls, they're cool. You know, it's something that we all look at and, you know, everybody wants to see their name at the top. Uh, so last year we were picked fourth. This year we picked third, even after winning a share of the title. But we just look – that's just motivation that adds on to everything that we've been working on, what, we're, what our goal is. And I'm, I'm not going to say – I'm mad about it because, you know, when you're picked at that top spot, everybody's gunning for you, you know, so I'm I'm not upset. And that's just a, that's just an opinion right now based on last year and based on what people think we have. But nobody can genuinely say they know what we have in our locker room except for us. And we know that and we're we're excited. I'm excited for this year. Oh, yeah, that confidence and that swag. I can just feel it from women's basketball for this season. And I love it. And I want to have some fun real quick with the show. Now, Dominique, one thing we got in common, we're Louisiana people. Well, you're born and raised in DeRitter. I'm born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. I love Mardi Gras. I love Jambalaya. I love drive through daiquiris. Oh, what are some things you love most about Louisiana? What's some things you like most about Louisiana? Man, you said some big ones right there. You know, the culture is there is amazing. You know, uh, I always joke with, with people out here, you always take the kid out of Louisiana, but you can't take Louisiana out the kid, you know. But – you know, try, I can't really say too much, but well, that today. was me. I said, I said that to my favorite. I can't even, I can't even <laughs> be mad at you about that one, but yeah. no, I I just love Louisiana as a whole. That was that's been my home for my whole life until I moved out here. You know, that's all I really knew. But um, man, I just love it. You talk about Louisiana, I put a big old smile on my face. So being out here every time I meet somebody who's from there or has ties in Louisiana is is great just to talk about it and enjoy the culture you know we're different you can't really say there's any places out there that's like Louisiana that's it I mean Dominique I'm SMTTT but I'm also way at who that I'm all at you know I'm a New Orleans guy so you know what I'm talking about but uh you are an incredible basketball player at the Ritter High School all state I mean you you were just everything down there but it took you to LSU for your first two years of basketball Wind up coming to Southern Miss, which we are so blessed to have you. So, but why did you choose Southern Miss after after playing for the Tigers? Man, I remember going into that portal and one of the first coaches was Coach McNeilis. She called me as soon as she seen my name pop up in. And she recruited me out of high school. Like, she was one of the first coaches to actually recruit me out of high school and I just decided to stay home. I mean, when you're from Louisiana and LSU offers you, it's hard to turn it down, you know. So when I did go into the portal and I talked to her, we didn't talk about basketball first. We talked about my life. She remembered my family. She remember she asked me about my brother, my parents, and and we just talked about life, you know. And then we talked about what my goals were. Was I, you know, what I wanted to do in college still, and what did I want to do afterwards. So just that conversation I had with her, and we kind of just clicked, and we talked pretty much every day after that day, continuously, you know, Coach if you know Coach Manilis, you know, y'all going to talk for a minute, you know. So we had some long <laughs> conversations, and and she just showed me that, like, if I come in, I come to Southern Miss, I put in the work, I put in the time, I'm going to be able to do everything I wanted to do, all my dream, dreams I'll be able to accomplish. So I, I'm happy I did that, you know, so. Oh, my goodness. I love hearing that because you two are – 
some of the most inspirational people you'll see on campus. I mean, when I when I think of Coach McNeilis and think of you, it's kind of likewise in the Southern Miss world. Um, and she says this one thing all the time. I had her on my show, and that's what I titled the show with her on. I'm fired up. Mm-hmm. Now, to just normal people saying fired up, it's like, you know, let's go. But to, I kind of think that's a deeper meaning when she says I'm fired up. Am I right? Definitely. Coach McNeilis, I don't think I've seen her – in anything where she's not fired up, whether it be film on the court, you know, just going somewhere in the community, just doing anything. Coach Manilis brings that same energy every time, you know. So, see, that that means a little more when it comes from her. Oh, absolutely. I love it. I love the relationship you two have. Pretty awesome. Looking to see it on the court this year. Now, let's call it what it is. You are an incredible talent. You've given me a hundred wild moments with a crossover, whatever you do on the court, but Growing up and even now, what, who are some players that you mold your game after or you inspire your game after? I got a couple players, you know, I like to take from everybody game, you know, just watching whether it be pros, you know, or just out of the park. I take from everybody. But my two favorite was Dwayne Wade and Candace Parker growing up. Like growing up in middle school, high school, like even now, I'll go on YouTube before the games and I'll just watch videos of them two and just – watch how they dominated at, at a professional level. And I just try to take from that, just, you know, watching interviews from how they talk, how they carry themselves. So them two definitely were two main players that I kind of just locked in and keyed on even when I was young. No, that's two great people to roll your game after. I know that. So I, I see where you get some of your game from with inspiration from them two. Um, last season. Sun Belt Conference champs in the regular season. What did that mean to you and the squad winning the title? It meant a lot. You know, when we come in during the summer and we bring in that new, the new team, uh, we set goals. And that was something we really wanted to do and achieve. It wasn't just something that we said. It was something that we consistently uh, put in work for every day. Every day we came in and we knew exactly what it, where we wanted to be at at the end of the year. And for me personally, it meant a lot. I didn't win a championship in high school. I didn't win one over at LSU. So when I got to come here and we win one my second year here, it meant a lot. Like, I'll never forget uh, running into the locker room after the UL game and we all just hugging each other. We Everybody got water on them. We all drinking water. And so, you know, so that feeling was just amazing. Like, even now when we talk about it, I, I still get excited because – I can say I was a part of something special. Even at Southern Miss, you know, going all those years, we haven't had that in a while. And so being able to say that I'm a part of that and now I have a – now there's a banner up and I can say I had a part in that, it, it just means more. Oh, yeah. I saw that banner last week. I actually was, snuck in with his Hattiesburg watching the men's team play real quick. And I'm like, there there we go. So, But congratulations on that. But, Dominique, I know you're competitive and you've got a fire in you. And for whatever reason, the NIT and the NCAA did not pick you to play in their postseason tournaments, which was ridiculous to me. So has that added a little extra motivation for this season? Definitely. Uh, going to play in the postseason means a lot because you don't want your season to end. You know, we had uh, a couple seniors. On, we have one senior Lauren on our team. We didn't want the season to end uh, early for those seniors. And I know for myself, this, this is my last year, so I don't want it to end anytime sooner than it needs to, you know. So not being able to go uh, play in a postseason, it it did kind of hurt, you know, because I wanted to – that's a different stage, you know. You get to play – you probably play a team that you didn't see all year. You know, you probably get to go somewhere or have somebody come here that you never – you don't know anything about. It's something new and it's something that you – that you can only experience while you're in school. So I, it definitely – it definitely did hurt not being able to go, but – you know, that's the that's the goal this year is to be able to get a postseason bid. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to happen, I believe. So, But, but Dominique, yeah. watching you and your game, people watch. I mean, people just know around the nation about you. It's like she's a complete player. I mean, what, what could she get better at? But there's a ton of nuances to the game, as you know, that I could get better at. What are some things in the offseason maybe I could do this a little better, that a little better, that you work a little extra at? Definitely. Oh, oh. My mindset every day I could get better. There's always something I could work on and just to perfect my craft, you know, and skill wise, I work on that every day. I'm getting better at that every day. But I think my focus for myself was just being that consistent leader for our team. You know, we always focus on the skill part of the game 
and not so much on the other little pieces, you know, and that's just something I've been trying to focus on every day. My coaches have been on me every day about it, consistency and, and being vocal and being that leadership. And some of my teammates, they've, they're they holding me accountable with that because they know if, and I know if I can bring that every day, then we'll be really special because the, the basketball is there. The skill is there, you know. It's just the other little things that we kind of push off to the side and then when stuff goes on, then we realize, oh, that's where we really needed to have our focus. So this summer, that has definitely been something uh, I've locked in on. My coaches have locked in on me. You know, nobody's letting me slack up, you know. So that's just some just having that consistency and leadership for myself for the team. Oh, I love it. I love that. I can't wait to see you, you this year play. And, and one thing really neat happened, I mentioned you're the Sun Belt preseason Women's Player of the Year, and, and Austin Crowley on the men's side is the Sun Belt preseason Player of the Year. And uh, I tweeted it out, you two together, because I was so fired up. I mean, look, people, this is Hattiesburg. Look what's going on. And you two interacted with each other after that, and it was I mean, put a big smile on my face. So with that said, what's the synergy like between the men's team and the, wins, and the, and the women's team? I mean, what, what's it like you two inter your two squads interacting? It's great. I mean, we hang out with the guys outside of basketball. Like, we see them every day coming in and out of the gym, but we hang out with them a lot. Like, Austin, that's my guy right there. Me and him, we talk We talk a good bit every day. Um, Ever since he came here last year, we, me and him talk a lot. And then even the new guys, like, they're cool. They're a cool group of dudes. And seeing them be able to win, you know, a championship last year and then us being able to win at the same time, it was great. They support us and we support them. Uh, we go to their games a lot, and then you'll come to our games, you'll see them down on the court side, you know, in those seats right there. And so it's just great. The energy is great. They're working towards something. We're working towards something. I think the goals are similar on both sides, um, getting to that postseason uh, for them again and for us being our first, you know. So it's great, man, being around them and seeing their work ethic and seeing them in the gym all the time and being able just to share this building with them and, and see the work with each other is great. I love hanging out with them. Like I said, we oh. hang out outside all the time. They're oh. they're a cool group of guys. So, oh, that's so cool right there. And I tell you what, we we need all that positive energy. A lot of eyes are focused on basketball side of things. Is you know football is struggling right now, so we need we need you all. We need y'all bad right now. So that's an added motivation for for Golden Eagle fans to get fired up because we got some good teams in the men's and women's side, but. You and Coach McNeilis just went to the Sun Belt Media Days. What's the vibe like about Southern Miss women's basketball right now from the outsiders? Uh, it's great. I think people are excited to see what uh, we're able to do. You know, last year we were new in the Sun Belt. This year, this is our second year, so nobody's surprised. Uh, they know what we're going to bring. You know, it's going to be a tough game every time you see us because we got a tough coach and we got a tough group of girls, you know, so that's – that's kind of known. I think um, everybody, the support is great. You know, Coach Manilis is fighting her battle and we're fighting it with her. And it just, it's great to see people around the league and just around the, uh, the country, you know, bringing that support as well. So it, it's been a lot of love shown while we were out there. And it was a great day. You know, I enjoyed being out there in New Orleans uh, and just enjoying the, the culture. You know, I love being in Louisiana. Any right. chance yeah, I get, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a New Orleans coach. guy. So, you know, I told you my reasons, but I love everything New Orleans. So that's cool. And it was some great pictures uh, coming out of there. So, like I said, Dominique, I mean, a lot of eyes are focused on women's basketball for some inspiration. We really need you. We need you now more than ever. So what's a message for the Southern Miss fans you might have from the great Dominique Davis? Only thing I, I can say is if, if y'all want to see a tough group of team, team that's not gonna give up, somebody who's gonna fight, somebody, somebody who who shows that grit that Southern Miss talks about, come watch the girls. The support is needed, is 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 welcome. We want it. You know, just having those fans. We had a couple games where we had a lot of fans and that y'all are the reason it helped push us over. Like, a lot of fans don't understand. Like, when we get in them close games, just having y'all there and seeing y'all and hearing y'all support, it helps us dig a little deeper, fight a little more. So, y'all want to see that grit that we always talk about at Southern Miss? Come watch women's basketball. You you heard her, Southern Miss fans. I mean, we need some inspiration, and I don't know what more inspiration you can get than the women's basketball human highlight reel and Dominique Davis. So, but 
Dominique, what an honor it was to have you on my show. And I can't wait to show, show the Southern Miss Nation what we had to talk about. So, but I think a great way to close things, if you don't mind, would be from you and me giving all the Southern Miss fans a big Southern Miss. To the top. To the top. If you want to break the rock, you need to make yourself indestructible. If you want to play between the hedges, you need to work out there, up there, down there, everywhere. If you want to reach the win bar, you need to lose sleep, lose count. You need to play every game like you got nothing to lose. Well, today's interview is with Southern Miss Basketball's human highlight reel, the one and only Austin Crowley and AC. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good, man. I'm glad to be here. Oh, so glad to see you, man. And and I tell you what, the accolades are through the roof for you right now. Last year, you were the Sun Belt Newcomer of the Year and first team Sun Belt, a finalist for mid-major player of the year. And this year, man, all the hype is here. The preseason Sun Belt Player of the Year. What's those accolades make you feel like? Man, it's good to see the hard work, you know, showing off. Uh, just, you know, being in those gyms and those quiet times when no one's in the gym, putting in all that work, man, it finally comes to light. And uh, it's big, you know. It's always something I dreamed of and I put in the work for it. So uh, to finally get here, you know, to have the recognition that I'm getting right now, it's great, man. I love it. Uh, but, you know, it's still a lot of work ahead, you know. I'm just – Keeping it day by day, work by work, just, you know, stacking days. Oh, absolutely. And, man, people know your name. And, you know, football's a little down right now, so people are really excited to see what you guys can do. What are you most excited about this upcoming season? Um, Just the new challenges that come with the new team. I think that's the big thing with me. Um, I take every year as a new journey because uh, each team is a different team. No matter you, – you know, how, you know how different teams are each year, you know. You have uh, different circumstances and different things that, you know, may derail the course of where you want to go. But it's all about the journey, man. It's always going to be about the journey. You just um, – coming to practice and working every day with those guys, getting the feel of understanding how each guy wants to play, everybody understanding their role. I think that's what I'm looking forward to, just to have the, the journey of – you know, trying to be one of the best teams in the country. And um, I look forward to it each and every day. I love going to practice with those guys. I love practicing with my coaches. Uh, those, they just It's just a great atmosphere in our, in our practice gym right now, and I just look forward to it each and every day. Oh, you see that messaging right there is why you're such a fan favorite in the Southern Miss world. Hey, I want to ask something real quick before we get on the court stuff a lot. Who would you mold your game after growing up? Was there a certain player you looked up to? <clears throat> um, I, I, look, I looked up to LeBron James, but – you can see I'm not that big, uh, but I, I picked up on a lot of his passing skills, his uh, IQ of the game. But the person I think I mold my game after the most, uh, probably like someone like Brandon Roy, you know, a point guard who can, who's a bigger point guard who can score, he can pass, uh, he plays he plays defense well. You know, um, I really look up to those guys who are two-way players, quality, you know, they play on the offensive end and defensive end. Uh, just guys like that, they can, uh, can impact a game not only on the offensive end, but on the defensive end as well. Oh, and you do on both sides of the floor. And real quick, man, there's a story being made from last season, and hopefully it really continues into this season. I told Coach Ladner you should make a movie what happened last season, which you guys did. And uh, But speaking of which, you led the team with 16 points, but you also had 63 steals. Let's focus on the steals. We know you can score. What makes you such a great defender? Um, Just uh, listening to Coach Warren and understanding my length that I have. You know, um, a lot of a lot of people, when they play defense, you know, they're, they're all about just guarding that guy. But me, I'm playing in the gaps. I'm understanding where the ball wants to go. I'm, I'm looking at film before games I'm just to seeing where these guys want to go, you know. Because in basketball, it's, it's just like football. I know exactly your reads. And like like you as, uh, as a defensive player in uh, football, you know exactly the one read, the second read, the third read. So I'm always playing chess, and I'm always trying to see – what reads is he trying to go? Every time he catches on his right wing, where does he look first? So um, I look at that. I'm trying to play chess. I'm not really – I really don't steal the ball as much on ball. That's something which is like Mo, Mo Arnold, he's great at that, just an on ball defender. Me, I'm really in the passing lanes, understanding, seeing where the reads are, going for the next pass, the next pass, the next pass. Where can I intercept this pass and, you know, get a head start on the fast break? That's what I think I excel at. Yeah, and I saw so many games, whether in person or on TV, I didn't miss a game. 
And I, I told so many people, I'm like, AC be a great DB, man, because he anticipates, <laughs> he, he kind of fools the guy into thinking he can make the ball breaks on it. So you got those DB reads, man. Yeah. Oh, cool. so I, I love seeing it. Last year, this is why I said it should be a movie. You guys were picked last in the Sun Belt. I mean, you know where Southern Miss basketball was at prior to last season. Mm -hmm. You guys win the Sun Belt. But during the season, you all wore a T-shirt with number 14 on it. Man, mm -hmm. talk about just that, that we're not going to lose this thing today and that, that whole shirt, what it meant. Um, When when I uh, decided to transfer to Southern Miss, you know, I came down and I talked to some of the uh, of our peers down here that just were regular students. And a lot of people were like, yeah, man, we really don't go to the game as much, you know, and stuff like that. And then going into the season, going into media day, uh, they picked us 14th and uh, Dre went down there and was talked to the media day. And he just said, one of the things that stuck out to the team is what he said was they picked us 14th, but we're going to see when we get on the court. And man, that just stuck with us. That number 14 stuck with us. So we decided to wear it on our back just to always remember to remember that, you know, they, they picked us 14th for a reason, you know, and that's a coach's poll. So that's everyone in the – that's coaches in the Sun Belt. So, you know, we just wanted that respect. And uh, Coach Ladd did a great job just putting that on the shirt, you know, just to remind us each and every day. And we took that to heart. Like, we talk about that all the time. Uh, just last year in the huddles, we always say, remember who picked us 14th? You remember who picked us? So it was a great feeling just to, you know, go out there and compete with those guys. And everyone on that team understood what that 14 mean. And just how important it was for us to go out there and just win back Hattiesburg. That's what we felt like we needed to do. We win, needed to win back, you know, the hearts of the Hattiesburg. Because, you know, even last year, before we even started playing, I would go into Walmart and I would get stopped. Like, man, we look forward to the season. But it wasn't as many people as it is now. But, you know, Hattiesburg, is, it's, it's just like a family. Just like we say, La Familia, it's a family. So we wanted to win our the, their hearts back to come back into the game, to get it back to where it was, where it was sold out pretty much every single game. So, man, we took that to heart, and we looked at that 14, and we always made sure, you know, we were going to represent for Hattiesburg. AC, you hit on a lot of subjects right there. I was going to hit on, but, man, I do have to focus on one because, AC, a lot of struggles with Southern Miss basketball, like we said before you got there. That's what I'm saying. There should be a movie made. If you had told me, AC, hey, Marshan, we're going to sell out a game this year. I would have been, AC, you got to really sell me on that one, man. <laughs> and, man, February – I live out in Lafayette, Louisiana. February night, the energy is built. You guys are doing something special. I'm like, told my wife, we're leaving. We're going to Redream Coliseum. I walked in that arena. I said, dang it, they did it. It almost brought me to tears. I had chills thinking about it because I was so happy for you, so happy for the guys that stuck it out, Coach Ladner. I mean, what would that night mean to you with a sellout? Um, just walking out of that tunnel and seeing everybody, uh, seeing everybody in the stands, man, sold out uh, for the first time in a long time. It, 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 like you said, it brought chills to my body, man. Just um, getting announced and then starting lineups and just everybody just chanting our name during the whole game, and um, I can see it in our in, in everybody's eyes the confidence that we had to you know just win that game, and we knew what we had to go do out there to win that game, and. Man, just to do it in front of the fans and just to feel the love of Hattiesburg again inside the Reed Green, it's, which is great, man. Like, um, it's not – last year wasn't the first time they ever sold out a game. You know, it was been done before. It just – we needed to, like I said, win the hearts back of Hattiesburg. So, it was great, man. I love the feeling. I love the, the atmosphere that we have in there. I think it's one of the greatest atmospheres in the Sun Belt, if not the country, when it's sold out. Well, I've been around Southern Miss for a long time. I've seen it packed a few times, and – like that night, man, it can be the loudest arena in college basketball when mm -hmm. it's packed. So, people, well, let, let's get in there this season. And you guys had the best win-loss percentage in the history of Southern Miss basketball at home. Y'all made that a special place with a theme. Let's go on that one more time. La Familia, man. Mm -hmm. I love it. I got the shirt. What does that <laughs> mean to you? Just, just, just hit on that La Familia topic one more time. Um, we just we have a lot of guys from you know different places. Um, uh, and like we always we always push the narrative of being universal. Everybody is one team, one sound, one band. And man, to be that, you have to be a family. You know, um, and, and when you have a family, you know exactly what your brother's gonna do. You know exactly what your mom's gonna say in exact moments. And that's what we we pride ourselves on. We pride on understanding, um, not only the basketball aspect but the family as well. Like. Um, if, if you, if I ask about your family, you ask about my family, you know about my family, whenever my family's in, in town, the whole team speaks to my family and it's vice versa. So we use it. We, we just, I don't know. I can't explain it. It's just the chemistry that we have is more than, um, just a basketball team. It's a family. And I have to credit that to coach Warren. He brought that over just 
He just wanted it. It's a family, man. The only way we're gonna succeed is by being a family. And you can attest to that, man. Your best, your best teams. I bet you played on with a family. Like you knew exactly where everybody, everybody was gonna be, exactly how they was gonna talk, exactly everything about them. So, man, we just we took that we took that term La Familia and we just turned it up, man. That's our family, and that's what we're gonna keep doing. Oh yeah, and then you see your passion comes through on the court. It comes through everything you say. And 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 there was a video last year where you guys had a team meeting. You you were talking in front of the team, man. It was just a team meeting, and, and man, the, the passion and emotion. It was almost like your love for basketball had really come back, man. Mm -hmm. and, and you were, it just AC. I, I'm a crier, man. You almost made me cry, AC, <laughs> man. I'm like, but that's a lot familiar, man. That's a lot familiar. So. But you are an NBA guy. You're going to have a long NBA career. I know that. And you tested the waters, you know, see what, what, what's out there. But thank goodness you came back, man. You came back. I went to practice last week to see what you guys looked like. Then I saw you. I was like, dang, you see my, my people play a little linebacker, man. What's going on here? But <laughs> what would you do in the offseason, man? Bigger, faster, stronger. <laughs> um, I, I, This summer, I really took a. I, I took the approach of being a professional. You know, I went I went out to uh, – I trained in a lot of different places. I trained um, in Las Vegas with a lot of professional guys, guys who play overseas, NBA guys as well. And just the preparation those guys have, you know, just understanding how to attack each and every day, not only on the court but in the weight room as well. So I just – I attacked each and every day like it was my last, you know, because I want to be one of the better players that play the game of basketball, not just one of the better players at Southern Miss. So I just – I attack each and every day, uh, and I don't take a day for granted anymore. You know, I, I feel like before uh, in my life, you know, just being young and not understanding um, how sort of a like stem you have to play the sport that you love. You know, you you only get to play it for so long, and the ball is not gonna bounce for, forever. So I just attack each and every day in the weight room, um, conditioning on the court, getting treatment. I just attack each and every day, and I think that's helped me. To gain a lot more weight, I put on a lot more weight. Uh, I'm way more explosive, and I have to credit that to Coach Tony, our weightlifting coach. You know, he put me on a great program. Uh, just understanding where my weaknesses were, where my strengths were, and he just he just pushed the narrative. He always wanted me to work as hard as I can. So, you know, why why would you want to work hard for someone who's just pushing you that hard and wants you to be that great? So, I gotta get a, I gotta get a love to Coach Coach Tony on that for sure. Oh, yeah. Nobody's ever going to question your hard work ethic. We respect that, AC. And, and one thing that we do love right now, I mean, obviously you are an incredibly talented basketball player, but the backcourt overall, I mean, you got you, Naftali Alvarez, and when you hit, when he's on a fast break, he does that spin move. It's like hitting X on the PlayStation, whatever that button is, man. It's <laughs> and then you, know, you got Mo, you got Ivory, man. Talk about how fun this backcourt is this year. Man, it's great to just have the depth that we have this year. Uh, we have a lot of guys who are great playmakers, and I think Coach Ladd talks about that in practice a lot. He he emphasizes, man, let's get these guys who are our playmakers, get them in space, you know, let them let them work, let them find you. And you know, we have great guys that know how to get everybody involved. Mo, Neff, uh, Andre, you know, we have a lot of guys who just when they get their head down and they go into the to the paint, they finding guys, finding bigs, getting everybody involved. Man, it's great to play with them. It makes my life so much easier, you know. I don't really have to work as hard, you know, just because I have such great guards that know how to get everybody involved. They know how to find me in the right places. They putting everybody, they putting the pieces of the puzzle in the right places. And um, like Coach, because Coach Ladd, the way he coaches us is, man, I'm going to call a play, but if you guys see something, we want you to get, be a basketball player. You're not robots. Be a basketball player. And um, I think we have great point guards who just understand how not to be a robot, how to play basketball at a high level. And they, those guys are going to be long professionals just because they're so good at what they do. And, man, it's been great for me, man. I, I love it. I love – like I said, I love coming to practice each and every day with these guys, man. It makes basketball so much fun for me. Yeah, and it was fun watching you guys practice last week, the sense of urgency. It even goes to the equipment managers. Somebody fell a little bit on the court. There was sweat, man. The equipment managers ran like their lives depended on it, wiped it up, ran uh -huh. off. I looked at my wife. I was like, even, even the equipment managers are getting after it, man. Exactly. <laughs> I love it, man. And one thing to be excited about for you, man, you got a seven-footer. Mm -hmm. Hello. What, what's that like having a big man in the paint? Man, Big Tegram, he, he's an extremely, extremely humble guy. He has a high IQ for things, you know. You can tell him something once, and he understands it from now on. Um, he's, he's he's great, you know. He, he's picked up on stuff that, you know, we really need him to do. And it, it's, it works great for me because, like I said earlier, I'm in the passing lanes a lot. So sometimes uh, someone may back, back cut me, you know. But I have Big Tegra. He's I think he led Juco in blocks, which is crazy. You know, he, he he's a great rim protector, big body guy, big solid guy. So sometimes I get back though cut, but I don't even think about it too much because I know I got Big Tegra back there who's tall, 
his hands are up high. He's always going to block shots. So, man, it's great for us, you know. I think we struggled in the area sometimes last year with, with teams who had, like, a bigger uh, five-man because um, we just pretty much played five out. You know, we didn't really have a solid seven-footer um, down there. But this year, I think we do. Um, and that's not to say last year's team was bad. It's just some, some places we were weak at. So, um, I think we definitely beefed up in that five-man spot. And um, he's a great guy, man. He's, He's a great guy. Uh, he's not just on the basketball court, but off the basketball court as well. He's uh, everyone speaks so highly of him just because of how he he acts around people, how he treats everyone. He's a nice guy, and on the court, man, though he's a nasty, you know, just hard nosed working guy. And that's what you need at your five, man. You need someone who's rugged and who's gonna get in there and work. So, man, he's gonna have a great year. I think. I think he's gonna have a great year just because of how hard he works, man. He's in there early mornings with me. He's in there late, you know, just. I, you can always tell when a guy wants to be great, and I think Big Tag wants to be great. Oh, great topics right there, hitting on the backcourt and, and the front court, man. That's that's why you, a lot of excitement coming into Southern Miss basketball. And two, hit on a couple games. This schedule's pretty exciting. October mm -hmm. 29th, there's an exhibition charity game against Mississippi State, an NCAA team at Reed Green Coliseum. I mean, exhibition charity game, AC, or is, is, we'll, we'll have to see. You know me, you know me. When I step inside that court, man, it, it's it, it's kill to be killed. So I'm get, I'm definitely going for the win. I don't know, but I don't know about anybody else, but me. You know me. I'm hard nosed. I'm going. I'm going for the win. Man, they see it might be the most intense charity exhibition game I've ever seen. <laughs> Looking Thanks. forward to it, man. And then another game, December twenty third in Biloxi. You know, you spent three years up in Oxford at Ole Miss before we got lucky and got you down here in Hattiesburg, but. Does that game mean something a little bit special for you to play the Rebels down at Biloxi on on the twenty third? Um, I think, I think I would be selfish if I if I was to say like, yeah, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I try to score forty that game. I'm gonna make sure I try, try to score thirty. But um, I don't. I'm, I'm not looking at it like that. I'm still looking at it as a game. But it's definitely a game that's circled on my on my um on my schedule just because you know a lot of people think that um. Uh, ACC schools uh, are better than uh, other schools, but, you know, it's still basketball. When you step in that court, man, it's basketball. You got to show me that you're better than me. And, you know, and, and my teammates, I know for a fact my teammates are going to be right behind me, ready to play, and they're hard-nosed guys. So, you know, it's definitely circled on our schedule for sure, and we're definitely going to be ready to play when we go there. Oh, yeah, on top of the Sun Belt schedule, it's a messy C team. Like you just said, man, it's going to be a fun, fun year, and uh, watching you be a human highlight reel. So, AC, as we close things up, what's a message you have for the Southern Miss fans? Um, Just we need you. We need you guys. You know, you guys showed up last year, and it, it just helped us so much. You know, uh, uh, I think I was at media today yesterday, and uh, I seen a clip of uh, Arkansas State guard just saying, like, man, I think Southern Miss was the hardest place to play. Um, and that's just that's just something that you guys are pretty much our sixth man. I mean, you guys are so loud in there, we and we on defense, and Coach Warren's going, and Coach Ladd's going. Man, it's just it's it's another factor that the other team has to you know they have to come to. So you know, I think the team the the team is great, man. I think we have a lot of the great pieces to make a huge run in March, and I think without with you guys, it'd be a lot easier. So. You know, just pack out the read, man. It's always – we love the support. We love you guys. We love, you know, just being in Hattiesburg. We think this is a perfect place to, you know, start a dynasty, and that's what we want to do. So, with you guys' help, you know, eventually this place is going to be a dynasty. It's going to be one of those one-and-done places as well. So, you know, just we love you guys, and we, we're thankful for you as well. Oh, AC, we love you right back, man. So, we appreciate all that love. La familia. So, but AC, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. So fired up to see you guys this season. But you know what I think the fans might like from you and me? Let's What's give that? them all a big Southern Miss. To the top, to the baby. Top.